We are live. I, uh, this is going to be a fairly informal live stream. Not that my normal ones are super formal, <laughs> but I'm just hanging with my beautiful wife who's now enjoying a muffin. Hello. And I'm, uh, getting ready to pick up Nimmer who I, uh, put up in a hotel for an extra day so we could stay with, uh, stay with the woman. And, uh, and we're gonna do Bellevue tonight and then I will come back here with Walter and we're gonna stay here for a few more days before uh, I go back to New York alone. But I just wanted to give you guys updates because Portland, the show was so phenomenal and the support was unreal. Artling is my new secret weapon, by the way. The dude who does all those drawings, all the paintings. Amazing. Yeah, t tell everybody about Artling. Well, I would like to call him Aaron because now we're on a first name basis. But Aaron was like just crushing it, such a hard worker, and brought like the most phenomenal recording equipment and lights. Was like up on scaffolding the whole time, like had his prints there. Like that guy is a hustler. The, so I'm going to be selling the Portland show. It's going to be called uh, Accidental Warlord because Artling's recording of it is so good. It's like staggering and he's just like this humble dude and i'm like dude i can i can get you paid dog you know it's so funny how some of these dudes like the most dedicated artistic people sometimes don't understand that they can make money at it and i'm like dude this looks so good and he just sent me a clip of the portland show oh why is this uh is this plugged in hang on i just said 10 percent. i'm sure it'll be fine a clip of the Portland show and I'll put it up online today. I just don't have my laptop with me. I didn't even bring my laptop to Portland because I thought we'd be here so, so short amount of time. So just to fill you in why, why my sweet love is in a hospital bed and uh, what happened. So we put on a show in a warehouse, not a warehouse, a, um, like a wood shop, but it looks like a, like a warehouse, like in industrial, right? And the stage was the back of a giant military truck and uh nimmer crushed we packed it right just just packed it and uh every time we'd have more tickets they'd sell out in like an hour it was like one of those vibes but i didn't want to do too many because i wanted to keep it kind of intimate and all the bears there were like legendary bears and people came to help out people came to help out to set up chairs the sound guy was great the family that the Redmonds much respect that, that put it on. Oh, Amy, how great are the Redmonds? Like, we owe so much to them for so many reasons. They're, they're the best family. Their kids, the, the parents, like, <clears throat> amazing. Like, legit the best. And so, I'm on stage crushing like a legend. Amy crushing? I'm crushing my muffin. No, but how hard <laughs> was that crushing? You were crushing. Amy, tell the people... I'm just kidding. Amy, tell the people how, how great I am, how great I was doing. Owen is the best. So anyway, I'm up there crushing. And uh, and I come off stage and I hear that uh, Amy had to go to the hospital. You know, a couple people came up and they're like, uh, I don't want to worry you, but uh, Amy started bleeding, you know? And so I obviously fucking spiraled and immediately just, just got the hell out of there, even though I was... Uh, so I apologize that I couldn't stay to take pictures and whatnot, but uh, family obviously comes comes first. And the reason I'm apologizing is because I know a lot of some people came great distances to be there, and uh, and I, I wish I could have hung out with y'all. We were gonna hang uh, all night, but you know things happen. You uh, man makes makes plans and God laughs, as they say. So the family and Nimmer had taken care of. Uh, of um amy and this is the fun oh we got a super chat good morning big bear glad amy's doing better thank you again for the great show and prosser my friend is now a new fan of yours hope uh you and the family get home safe thank you yeah i'm a, i'm uh thank you yeah prosser was great oh yeah shout out to prosser for everyone who came out to that i'm just uh telling the portland show story and i'll do a, a full story with clips tomorrow or maybe the next day. I'm just like, just on my phone right now. So Nimmer is always somehow involved when I'm about to have a kid. 
like uh like the like the first time like with Walter, I was with him when Amy uh went into labor two weeks early. Was it two weeks early? Two weeks early. And so there's something about Nimmer. He just keeps uh he's causing uh what's it called when you start not cramping, but what is it? Uh labor? No, yeah, but what's it called when you like measure the distance between what? What? You know when it's like, oh I'm Contracting. Contra he causes contractions. He causes contractions. Nimmer causes contractions. So, oh, Amy's good. No, baby's not here. I'll tell you the story right now. So, she had, like, a lot of bleeding, which is not good when you're 30 weeks pregnant. And uh, we get to the hospital, and Nimmer took care of everything. So did the family. So did... Uh, you know, hope and everybody shout out to the whole, to the whole crew. And so it was serious enough where she can't leave the bed for five days. And, uh, but they gave her magnesium to, to calm down the, the contractions and, and, uh, cramping and stuff. Cause they might, they were like gonna give her surgery potentially to, to have, uh, if the baby, uh, had to come, come early. And so that's why we've been just uh, here, just chilling out. And uh, we met up with Artling yesterday, though, to take a couple pics for the you, uh, Nimmer induces labor. It's true, dude. You do induce labor. It's weird. Uh, so where were we in the story? All right. So I was like, Amy, should I cancel Bellevue? I'm canceling Bellevue. I'm going to uh, stay by your side. And, uh, and she was like, no, you definitely got to do Bellevue. I'm like, why? She's like, because uh, hospital beds ain't fucking cheap. And we are practical people. So I will be, t <laughs> uh, so I will be uh, uh, doing Bellevue tonight. And then I'll come back here with Walter and we'll set up shop. And so she's not coming back to New York with me, like ever. So uh, the, the move out here is going to be a lot uh, expedited. We're now, we, we put an offer on a house that we didn't get. We're, uh, we're now uh, figuring all that out, but she can't fly. All right, any of you guys have any uh, questions for Amherst or me before I get out of here? Oh, and I was on a bender with, uh, on Scott Adams' videos. That guy's pretty great. He's Scott Adams is a, he, he's a cartoonist that did Dilbert and he's like an expert in persuasion. It's fascinating. Wow. I would never expect that from a cartoon. All right, let me talk to you guys, see if you guys got peace bear. Is she comfortable? Yeah, she's wicked comfortable. How are you, baby? I'm so comfortable. I just took a shower, so I feel really good. Yeah. What else do you want to say to the people? Uh, just everyone that came out to Portland was so nice. I got to uh, do tickets at the door, so I got to meet a lot, of, like pretty much everyone that came in, and everyone was so awesome. And there were so many pregnant ladies in the crowd. It blew my mind. Yeah, the bears are very fertile. Yeah, it's such fertile people. Like, it was, it was a lot of fertile, beautiful people. A lot of fertile, beautiful people. Oh, yeah, me and Nimmer are driving up uh, to uh, Bellevue today together, and we're going to hang with Walter, and we're going to look at houses. What Bob say, why don't they, oh, why don't they laugh is featured on the Podbean mobile app available for iOS and Android. Subscribe, share, much love to Amy, baby, and you. Yeah, so check out why don't they laugh at the Podbean mobile app, iTunes, or anywhere else you get your, uh, your, uh, your podcast. All right, what is that, sir? After you move, you're always welcome to visit Eastern Washington. The winter blues can really get you on the west side. Yeah, Eastern Washington is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. If Amy's family didn't live more on the west side, Eastern Washington was a real was a real contender. That's one reason why I performed at Prosser. I really wanted to see I really wanted to see the area and, and it's great. They 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 grow the soy, they don't eat the soy. And that's why their dicks and their balls haven't fallen clean off their bodies. What do you think of that, Amy? This is a really funny visual. For those just joining us, the baby's fine. The, Amy's fine. We're all good, but she can't leave the bed, the hospital bed for five more days. So, uh, I'm on bed rest. she's on bed rest, which is good because she is a real go getter. So just like me, like I, I work too hard and then, or what does this say? Who do I contact for potential venues? 
Uh, email unbearablecomedy at gmail. That's uh, Deleb. She's wicked organized. But what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Like, I'll work too hard and spiral. Who's this? Uh, good morning, Amy. We met and took a selfie. I'm Andrea in the green dotted sweater. I remember I'm, you. You're awesome. I'm near you. Let me know if I can help you. Same for you, Big Bear, and Nimmer. You have my contact info. See? Thank you oh, so and, much. You were such a sweetheart. Oh, and the family that, that whose uh, space it was wanted to tell me that my fans and the bears are the like the coolest people ever. Like after I had to bail out of there real fast, like tons of people stayed and cleaned up and people were drinking. And the dude even told me, because they're a very successful family, and he's like, We've had like uh, get togethers here because I'll like, you know, sometimes give people free beer. And he's like, all these people came not even knowing there was going to be free beer. And they were like blown away that I was giving them free beer. He's like, it's it's just so amazing to see people to, to not be used. <laughs> I don't know. And, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, like, thank you guys for making me look good, too, because uh I really think we're taking some real uh, jumps here, some risks, and uh, we're being very innovative with comedy right now. It's it's almost like Uber for venues. Like the concept, you guys don't understand. Like the concept that you can do a comedy show anywhere is never. Oh, be, cool. It's not been done. It's like it's just like you don't need a church to pray. You don't need a comedy club to tell jokes, right? So. We set up a show on the back of a truck in a industrial space where men work in wood. And it was one of my favorite shows I've ever done. And it's, it's, it's like, and it looks beautiful because Artling is like, he's like our cue. Me and Nimmer were talking about that. It's like, um, like from uh, James Bond, he's our cue. You know, he's just like that dude that can always get it done and like know stuff. So when, when I move out to Washington, I'm uh, gonna set up a studio with like legit cameras, legit audio, all that stuff, and I'm gonna uh, get Artling to do it. Oh, Eric's Jamal Bond. That's hilarious, Nimmer. And Nimmer destroyed. It's so funny, dude. It's like, I'm so glad I get to be the one to introduce the, the Nimmer to the world. Good to see Amy in good spirits. That makes such a difference in staying healthy and coping with the stress of a hospital stay. Oh yeah, we're we're playing board games. We uh we've just been chatting. Check out Olympia. I'm 30 weeks prego also, and was looking forward to seeing Amy tonight at the Bellevue show. But safety first. Uh, thanks for the super chat. Yeah, she's not going anywhere. We're I, I think God. I, I was I was telling Crowder this morning that uh, I think God's trying to teach me a lesson. I mean I don't I I mean he's got more important things to do obviously, but. I think uh, the fact that I'm stuck in Portland for five days is seriously hilarious. That is really funny. Because all I do is make fun of Portland and the soy. Thank you, Owen, for helping keep me sane and able to laugh. Amy, glad you're okay. Take care of yourself. Lots of love from me and the family. That's from Tina McCunty Bear Fisk. Hilarious. <laughs> McCunty Bear. McCunty Bear is great. Uh, anyone have any questions for the Amers? Because we haven't done a Beauty and the Bear in a while. Morning, Benjamin Bear fam. Do you have the bear phone today? Wanted to send you a cool work of art. I think you'll really dig. I don't have the bear phone. I don't even have my computer right now. So just uh, send it to unbearablecomedy at Gmail or why didn't they laugh at Gmail. Um, but any of you guys have any uh, questions for the Amers? What are we naming it? What are we naming the baby? Well, we're down to a few names, yeah, Amy. it's so funny because the doctor that was on call yesterday we had the exact same like baby name list. Like she almost named her first son Walter. I thought that was really cool. We're, we're also, the, uh, it was, all right, this is from uh, uh, Arrow Bear. It was so cool to see how many bears came out, how y'all were uh, doing in the app. You should see some of the bear hangout live stream vids if time allows. It was unbelievable what happened in Portland. It was unbelievable how, how, how well it went Name him Derek. Well, we're thinking Frederick, Roger, Henry. Um, there we have, we don't know. It's a Wolfgang, obviously. I don't know. Bear. <laughs> but Frederick is legit. Roger's legit. 
I really like Roger. I like Roger Wolfgang Smith. Roger Wolfgang is a good one. Roger Wolf. So, uh, any questions for the aim? Lawrence is a good one. Yeah, but Larry, Larry gets a little dicey. I'm, I'm too close to the Impractical Jokers to not... Like, Larry is off the table for me personally because I'm, I'm tight with uh, the Jokers, and, and they've kind of made Larry, like, a, a different name for me. Delev says, maybe I'll come to you when you see him. I don't know who you're responding to. Is it maybe the name will come. Oh, maybe the name will come when we see him. Yeah, we'll just be like, let's name him Baby. Yeah, I feel like all newborns look the same. Eric says, Amy, who's your favorite black guy? Hint, I'll start your contractions right now if you answer wrong. Oh, Nimmer. Nimmer is abusing his, his black contractions power. Eric made me feel so safe on Saturday night. He's a, he's a Marine. He, like, just, like, swooped me up and took me to the hospital. I know, and then I came here and just bitched. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I, I, I was a sweetheart. I mean, like, look who, look who took our hospital socks. <laughs> I'm just no, I wasn't kidding. bitching, but I was, you know... Glad it's all okay from Nick West, Texas Bear. Thanks. Yeah, no, we're good. You know, uh, hang on, black contractions power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I put, a I put a video up. I was just recording uh, just a little bit of Nimmer, and he had such a funny joke. He was like, I joined the Marines just so I can have white people thank me for their freedom. God, it's fu that's funny. Uh, Roger sounds like he might boink you if you bend over. Well, like, yeah, because Roger almost sounds like a verb. Like, oh, I was going to bend over, but I thought someone might Roger me. Don't you think, like, the names Roger and Walter are so cute together, though? Roger and Walter? Wally and Raj? Yeah. I also like Freddy and Wally. I love, I love Frederick. I was going to name him after Nimmer, potentially, just because he keeps saving uh, my babies. <laughs> yeah. But um, Eric, I don't know. Frederick, there's an Eric in there. Roger means to have sex w in in British slang. Roger means to have sex in British slang. Oh, dang it. That doesn't take that it off. Like, is that like commonplace British slang? Is that like urban dictionary? Is that like urban dictionary? Everyone's name is an urban dictionary. Like, I'm pretty sure Amy means something horrific. Yeah, Amy means uh, to whack someone off on a train in yeah, Britain. Yeah, like literally it's gone. Like in England, to, to Amy means to, uh, to uh, you know, not, not... To, to complain about someone stealing socks. Oh, uh, oh I've been amied. A good rogering. Uh, Henry's cute. Oh, yeah, I know. There's so many good ones. I also like Jordan. I wanted to name him after Peterson. But Frederick is a strong name. It's a strong Northern European name. Would you spell it with, like, Frederick or Frederick? Let's just name him Mohammed. Yeah. <laughs> Someone just said that. All right, any more questions for the Aimster? Leonidas. That's a good one. Isn't that the 300? Leonidas. No, but I like Northern European. I like the, uh, you know, we're trying to get away from your, from your Mexican heritage. Oh, you stop it. <laughs> uh, George, George is theoretically named after my biological father. Jorge. I know. Amy's biological father's named Jorge, and I didn't even put that together when we named our dog George. If you're in Portland downtown area, you have to go to Voodoo Donuts. Did you see This is 40 with Paul Rudd? I'm 40 and I can't stop eating sweets. Ask Amy if she has to cut you off from sweets. Uh, I've been to Voodoo Donuts before and it rocks. It's so good. I got a, I got a, a story about donuts. Hey, Big Bear, I hope all goes well. Amy, I've been Jelly Bear since last year. I've already taken in Un Unbearable's app. I'm not changing, big guy. My flask is already engraved. Hammer number 55. I love it. Uh, so there's a, there's a donuts place in Portland where they give free donuts to black people. It's called Reparations Donuts. I'm not joking. Here's some more little things about uh, Portland that I find infuriating. You're not allowed to pump your own gas. Legally, you can't pump your own gas. Like you go to pump your own gas and they're like, how dare you? It's, it's literally infantile. It's an infant. It's a, it's a state of infancy. There's also a bar where if you're black, they give you free drinks. I'm, I'm going to go in blackface. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint my face black and I'm going to go get hammered. Because this is my theory. I Because th there's so few black people in Portland and everybody's like a rich hipster that tries to pretend they're, they're homeless and there's tons of actual homeless. So here's my theory. These rich SJW hipster slobs came in here and made it so like working class people and many of which happen to have been black. Do you have a pastor bear yet? Possibly. Why does no one name their kids Adolf? But seriously, not Winston, Walter, Winston Smith. Oh no, not Winston. Winston Smith is a 1984 character. So, uh, I do like the name Winston though. It's a shame that Winston's a great name for the win. Win and wall. Wall win. But Winston Smith is the character from. All right, so anyway, I think that they fucked black people over so hard here that they're just spiraling and they can't. That's why, I like, uh, Scott Adams, he was talking about the triggers of Trump, like how to. Because Trump, Trump delusion syndrome? No, what is it? Trump. There's some like mental illness these days. What's it called? Trump something syndrome. You guys know what I'm talking about? Trump derangement syndrome. It's real, dude. It's real. And it happens from cognitive dissonance. Like uh, I just posted a meme of Bernie Sanders that says, the problem is prisons, guns, and greed. So give me 90% of your income or someone with a gun will come take you to a prison. Wade Wally, what? Wade, name Wade. Wade's a great name. So, and I was just texting with Josh Wolf. We we're kind of arguing about uh, whether or not college was uh, is is worth it, and I'm like, of course not. And he was like, no, college is good. And I'm like, it's such a waste of money. And uh, and then out of nowhere, I go, and and by the way, what happened with Russia? Because me and him used to fight about that all the time. Like a year ago, me and him would just text until our thumbs ached about um, Russia. He was all—he was like, dude, America sold out to Russia. Trump has sold his country to Russia. So I'm like, a year later, literally a year later, I'm like, so whatever happened to Russia? Like, what, what, what's up with that? It turns out it was like a porn star that he fucked or something, right? And he was just stopped responding. He's like, okay, dude. Okay, bro. And so I'm watching Scott Adams. Um, I'll read that super. Can you keep telling the super chats? Because I, I, yeah, if I, I, I won't be able. I'll to... let you know when they start to disappear. Okay. So, Scott Adams did this whole thing about how to possibly pull someone out of Trump derangement syndrome, and you got to start real small, with the animals. Like uh, Trump called a, a Mexicans animals and be like, do you think that? And then show the real clip where he called MS-13 animals and how the media blatantly twisted that. It's, it, it's the easiest one ever, is the animals one. Because it's so obvious that isn't what happened. And then you go from there to, uh, uh, was it X1 Charlottesville or, I can't, well, I'm, it might've been Charlottesville, how he said that um, there's, there was people that were right on both sides and that obviously is, is a horrifying statement if you're including the, uh, the tiki torched actual racists uh, of, of Charlottesville, but that wasn't what it was. A lot of people don't realize, and this is so obvious when you see it, that there were four sides to Charlottesville. The original Charlottesville protest was, should you take down the, the Confederate statues or leave up the federal statues? Those are the two things. That's what the, the arguing was over. Those are two groups of people where they, they, they're both good people in each group and blah, blah, blah. Then you bring in Antifa and the, and the Tiki racists. Those weren't in the conversation. The conversation was about Confederate statues. And he was right. There are good people on both sides of that argument. Do you, uh, do you adhere to our history regardless of what it is? and leave up uh, statues, or do you take them down because they're associated with uh, a rebellion in America or slavery or some shit, right? So you, you ease people into that, and then the next one you go to, uh, 
Uh, We're gonna start oh, it started disappearing. Super chats. Thank you, Amy, for letting me be the bouncer at uh, PDX show and my girlfriend help with merchandise. Show is yeah, epic. You guys were awesome. Bears rule. What's that, love? You guys were awesome. Is it true Amy works in the app? I haven't been in the app yet. I, I, I work in chat sometimes. She works in the chat. She'll work in the app, though. Wyatt. Wyatt's a good name. That's a great name. I like the name Wyatt. Name suggestion. Gringo McOmbre. Mm -hmm. Vincent. Oh, oh, dude. I, I recommended Vincent. Vincent was on my list. So anyway, um, that was really interesting from Scott Adams. For Scott Adams, and he, and, he, and he has a great video about how to identify cognitive dissonance. See, this is the stuff that I like. Because there's also cognitive dissonance on the right. There's also derangement syndromes that happen in right-wing politics that... Um, that you have to watch out for as well. And I like that about this guy because he's all about rhetoric and words and stuff, which is, which is what I'm into as well. And uh, he identifies like five or six red flags to look for someone that is experiencing cognitive dissonance. And accepted cognitive dissonance is what leads to mass hysteria and mass derangement, uh, similar to like the Salem witch trials. Like, um, when you accept something that's nonsense because it's too painful to readjust your worldview, you put yourself in a real vulnerable position. And if it's, if it's big enough, it can affect everybody. But even with Trump derangement syndrome, I think that the only people it really hurts the most are the people experiencing it because they can't identify reality well. You know, and I was, I was arguing with Wolf about that, about... Uh, college degrees and he's like well I went to college I'm glad I learned stuff and and all that I'm like dude it's gone up like a thousand percent in tuition price in the last 10 years do you think that its value has gone up that much like when you get a college degree unless it's highly specific unless it's uh you know if you go to trade school or if you go to uh you know being a nurse is a great job right now um certain stem fields and someone made a point about medicine, like, oh, you, you want your doctor to not go to college? I'm like, no, but do you think it's, you, you think it's a good idea? If you go to medical school, you're leaving with 400,000 in uh, debt and you're not gonna start practicing until your late 20s at the earliest. And uh, if, if medicine is remotely socialized, if Bernie Sanders gets one pube hair of what he's asking for and every doctor's paid 200 grand or some shit, it's game over. It's game over. Like those debts will never be paid back. And uh, even right now it's overpriced because anytime the government subsidizes anything, price gouging starts happening. Dude, Bernie Sanders is such a fucking loser. That guy just sucks. He, he had another tweet where he was like, in the state of California, it costs $30,000 to send a kid to USC but $75,000 to send him to jail. Why don't we start sending these kids to school? So if someone rapes a chick, you wanna send them to school? That's confusing enough. But also, the reason all this shit is so expensive to begin with is because the government subsidizes it and they've been overly, the unions in fucking, in California are just out of their minds. They're a bunch of, it's like Bane. It's like, are oh, you people? You deserve more. I mean, Bernie Sanders, that crusty old commie, he's never worked a day in his life. He's just been exploiting the American people like a fucking asshole. He's a democratic loser. Dude, he's, he's, wor he's even worse than democratic. He's socialist. And lately they, they've been kind of the same thing. But uh, I don't know. Any, uh, any more... Questions for uh, Amy? Because then I might have to get out of here. Bernie is a New York City Bolshevik. He he really is though. He really is, and it's not. It's uh. He's uh. He honeymooned in the Soviet Union. Oh, someone just said something about Bernie. They super chat it. Bernie Sanders is under investigation for bank fraud. Him and his wife have lawyered up. <laughs> Bernie Sanders is bank fraud. Like he is fraud. He literally says prisons, guns, and 
greed are the problems. And then he says, give me all your money or I'll send people with guns to put you in prison. This is from Matt. It was an amazing experience to see you again. Meet Amy and Eric and work with Aaron on the video. I got in some sweet cardio to earn those beers. So everything is a win. Guys, you don't understand how fun the Portland show was. And uh, I, 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 I'm sorry that I didn't get to stay and do pictures and, uh, and hang. Because the bear hangs are great. But I feel like the bears were hanging with each other and everybody was cool and had a great time. But I had pressing matters. And Amy's good, though. She's good. So is the baby. And, they, and the good news is this hospital kicks ass. Yeah, so, this hospital was a great one to have end up in. It's, 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 it's a good one. <laughs> so the hospital kicks so much ass that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, we found out the baby's in, insanely healthy. Because they said that even if the baby came early, which it would at this point, not only would he survive, the, the odds that he would be like drastically hurt or whatever were pretty low. Um, you know, he'd have to be in, in, the, in the EQ for a while. But, NICU. Huh? NICU. What's NICU? Neo-intensive care unit, I think. Neo-intensive care unit? What happened to the old one? Why, what happened to, why, why new? Why does it have to be new? Why does everything got to be new? Neo, it's a you know, little baby. Little baby stuff? Yeah, and everybody was sending their thoughts and prayers and stuff. And by the way, that shit is really good and, and is awesome. Dude, fuck anyone that's like, we've had enough thoughts and prayers. It's time for action. All that means is they want to pray to a different God, and that's the state. They want When they say that, that means that they want more laws so Bern, Bernard Sanders can fucking steal more shit. Thoughts and prayers literally is awesome when you're in a bad spot. Like when people would set right, like we're praying for Amy and the baby, it means a, a ton. It means so much. And like when people don't see that, they're such fucking idiots. It's like, oh, oh, what are thoughts and prayers gonna do? What are thoughts and prayers gonna do? We need laws. We need a, a Stalinistic centralized authoritarian government to help us because, you know, community and prayer and thoughts and 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 bonding and human love just doesn't cut it we need to give a, a monopoly of force to 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 the united states government you know a government that was responsible for slavery and jim crow and uh the creations of reservations and uh every other thing that we fucking complain about all the time that was the government so we want to give them more power it's it's mind-blowing it's mind blowing. What is uh, Fred Eric? That's the number one. Do you get the Sky Team? Ah, uh, what do we got here? Did you get to take the Sky Tram to the hospital in Portland? I'm grateful that I was well with the Amy and the baby. No, we actually took a car because we didn't want to die. Because there's a tram, there's a Sky Tram, which is basically a gondola for hipster retards. I love it. Amy loves it. Uh, we can all be a little different. It's fine. No, I'm not. I'm not moderate. I'm not a moderate. I don't like middle ground. The whole like we can all be different. It's fine. Yeah, we can. And you have a right to be different than me, but you're wrong. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any questions for Amy? You can ask anything, by the way. It doesn't just have to be about the hospital stay or anything. You can just make it about anything. No, the baby's not been born. The baby is still inside, growing to be a legend. Yeah, they gave me a bunch of uh, medicine and bed rest to make sure the baby stays inside for a while longer. Yeah, we got, we got a bunch of magnesium. And uh, steroid shots, which hurt. A steroid shot. Because uh, we wanted to keep the baby inside, inside the woman. And the steroid shot is... Uh, it, goes in, it goes in your ass. It goes in your ass. <laughs> and it burns. And it burns. <laughs> how big is he now? Do, do we know how big he is? Well, he's 31 weeks, so he's probably a little over three pounds. A little over three pounds, which is... Uh, it's kind of tough for them to tell it's, them. It's the, it's the exact weight of my cock and balls. Because I've never eaten soy in my life. Not one time. 
I've never eaten soy, so my wiener and balls are exactly three pounds. I heard all of that. She thinks she heard it, but she didn't. What are you looking at, love? My food. Oh, are you excited? She didn't. She couldn't eat or drink water for how long? Uh, a, a decent amount of time. Like, for the first 24 hours, I was here. Yeah, she was spiraling, but I was just pounding food in front of her. It was hilarious. You, you were better than that. You are exaggerating. I was I was really nice, by the way. I'm exaggerating. I was not being a dick. We got in one minor argument, but it wasn't anything. Uh, hang on, we got here. Amy, how do you feel about wine tasting as a vacation? Big Bear sent you text with an idea that's been bouncing in my skull. Love? Where, uh, where wine tasting? I mean, I think that's a great vacation. I've, that sounds odd. Like, if you go up to, like, Northern California or, like, Eastern Washington, wine tasting sounds Oh, awesome. Eastern Washington has great wine, too. They have great venues. Amy, what are your favorite manly movies? Manly movies? The last one I watched that I enjoyed was 300. She, lo she liked 300 because it reminded her of me. There's some other ones that I'm totally spacing out. I like The Godfather, oddly. Um, and then, like, Snatched. I don't know. Oh, I like, uh, I gotta think of it, but, like, the cops in Boston that are twisted with the mafia and it has Jack Nicholson in it. Oh, yeah. That was, uh... I forget. I'd say it's a manly movie. I, I really it's a good like. movie. I know the movie you're talking about. Departed. Departed, yeah. I should make one called Retarded. It's just like Departed, except it's retarded. Oh, and some people were like, Prosser was just a, t uh, 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 a sneak peek. No, Prosser was a great show. It was just smaller. It was more mellow. It was less uh, legendary in the sense that we didn't have to take... Like, because the theater there was so cool that we could do just a normal show where it was just um, what a show normally is. And Portland just is always gonna be in my heart as something really special because we did something that I've never been a part of and I've never even heard of. We literally, cause one of my jokes was I was like, you know, all these, so all these soy boys wanna protest me here in Portland. And so I thought about, oh, well. We got a nurse coming in. Sean King, Bernie Sanders, BR. Uh, 33 bucks if you name the baby Nimmer. 34 if you go for the London favorite, Mohammed. Seriously, good luck, hugs and prayers. Okay. Um, she's at her desk right now. We got, we got some company. Um, well, it's worth it for the 34 bucks, you know, the life of, life of hilarity with a name like that. Uh, the London favorite, that's... That's horrifying. She'll try to get to you. She's a warrior. Oh, she's legit. And, um, 872 bears awesome. in the house. I know. That's so, it's so, I'm so thankful. It's crazy. What, oh, what'd you guys say about Sean King? You know, say it. She says it's kind of Sean King, Bernie Sanders, and BLM co had a conversation about how to make change. Retarded. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Chances we trigger the nerve. Uh, zero. Zero. Jets, movie Fast and Furious, people asking questions. Yeah, things are flying. Well, me and Nimmer have to head up. Yeah, we'll hang after the show tonight in uh, Bellevue. Because I feel like that's a fun time. And I, it's at least, you know, it's at least the Bears can do that. You know, I hang out, grab picks, grab, grab a beer, a lot of high fives. And then uh, the next morning, I head back down here with Walter for the next several days. Then I go back to New York alone. I, uh, uh, we try and close on a house, uh, send all our stuff out here. My brother's wicked sad, I'm wicked sad. Like legit, it's, it's pretty hard on the brothers to be honest with you. It's uh, cause he thought that we'd have the, the summer together. And uh, what was that? Oh cool, no worry. It's a phone. Oh, that's cool. I'm not going anywhere. Because we thought we'd have the uh, the summer together and things really expedited. And so, uh, pretty emotional. How about Jerome? Uh, Jerome? Were the, were the buffaloes Jerome? No, do anything you want. I'm just, I'm just a wallflower here. 
Who are you calling? The insurance oh, we're calling insurance to see how much this uh, this insanity is going to cost us. How's the food in the hospital? It's really good. Portland, uh, yeah. Portland yeah. hospital food is actually rid ridiculously good. I've been eating all of her food because the last thing a pregnant woman need is, needs is nourishment. Hang on, Rogan on Shapiro's Sunday special was pretty good. What did you think? I haven't seen it yet. I've just been chilling. Tayshawn, that's a good name. All right, so now I think I'm gonna get out of here because she's gonna talk to the insurance company and we're gonna find out why we have to sell all our belongings to pay for everything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Saw a picture of Sean King and Bernie. Looked like Bernie's redis redis redistributed Sean's mountain. That's hilarious. It's true. Uh, came in late. How was the show with the army truck? Dude, sick. Sick. I'm going to release a special as uh, Accidental Warlord. It'll cost you 10 bucks. But uh, all proceeds go to paying for uh, uh, that. <laughs> Any final questions for the Amers? Oh, and by the way, the special is going to be, it literally is going to be my best special. No joke. Because it looks so good and sounds so good because Artling is a secret weapon. I'm telling you guys, Artling is legit as fuck. Hope you have a speedy recovery. Amy, it's time for you to stay healthy. Amy, how you feel? Feel good, hydrated. She's good. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Amy? Covered, medical coverage should be free in Portland. Well, we're out of state. It's the out of state thing that's a little scary. We're out of state and it's just night after night after night in, in like a hospital that is, is a lot of like tests, a lot of tests, a lot of like nurses on hand. It's going to be probably three K a day. Uh, you know, this is looking forward to tonight, big bear. Oh, it's going to be sick. It's going to be sick. How can we help? You don't have to help. You guys already do help. The, like literally there's no, it's fine. It's always fine. I'll always let you guys know if there's like a serious issue. That's why you just consistently work and, 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 uh, things are fine. Everything's fine, but you know, that's why I like uh, value. It's like, if you want to help buy the special when I release it, that way it's not like a handout. You get something, you get something awesome. You get a fucking awesome special and we get to pay off um, the commie medical bills. <clears throat> I'm going to share to my centers of the host group. Uh, while I need to get a job already and support the fam. Well, he naturally likes working. He likes task completion. Any more joke bring up joke break down episodes of Why Don't They Laugh? Yes. I'll do a whole Why Don't They Laugh about the Portland show. Unfortunately, they laugh quite a bit. <laughs> um, for the food bill, mooching Amy's food. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. Thank you. That was wicked generous. We got to hit the road. Me and Eric are going to hit the road. But there's so few times that I get Amy uh, without Wally because Wally's with the grandparents right now and great grandparents. And he's happy as a, as a bean. What do you mean bean? Not a soybean. Why did I say bean? I don't know. Such a weird, like, be, like, like beans are like the last happy thing I think of. Beans aren't happy. Maybe I was subconsciously trying to say that he wasn't happy without us. <laughs> a kidney bean sounds kind of happy. Yeah, they're kind of smiling. I guess a kidney bean is like really happy. Those, like, they happy as a bee. <laughs> I'm just such a fucking idiot. Did I, I thought, I, like, in my mind, I'm like, happy, happy as a bean. I thought I was happy as a bean. I like happy as a bean, but that's pretty funny. It's happy as a bee is what it is, right? Uh-huh. A little bit for the hospital bill. Oh, thank you, bud. Um, all right, so any questions for Amy? It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about uh, bees are busy, not happy. Yeah, but busy makes you happy. Busy as a bee, happy as a clam. Dude, clams are the most miserable animals in the world. Big Bear, get well soon, Amy. I have a big CPA exam. Well, good luck to you. you. Jelly beans are happy. Well, they also cause diabetes. <laughs> Bees have the lowest rates of depression of all insects. Is that true? Well, they, well, they commit suicide a lot, and it's always rage-related. Like, if a bee, like, really hates you, they just will stab you knowing they'll die. They're like uh, little kamikaze bees. <laughs> and they sound like Aziz Ansari when he talks. 
Eh, and then, 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 yeah, bees all have AIDS. Um, if you give bees an antidepressant, they're much less likely to kill themselves in a rage storm because they just want to sting you before they die. Um, feel better sending prayers and love to your way. Yeah, and by the way, that's awesome, and I, we really appreciated that. And anyone who thinks thoughts and prayers are stupid are fucking idiots. It's awesome. Uh, I'm going to become a beekeeper, by the way, love. Want to talk about the bees? Yeah, when we move, we're going to get a... Owen's going to do a beehive. Right? Is that what, what's what it's called? You know, in the biz, we uh, we call it a colony, but whatever. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have never... We're going we're gonna to harvest the, the honey and the beeswax. Honey and beeswax. I'm also getting a goat. At least, no, multiple goats, because one goat would be sad. That's what Amy said. No, alpacas. No, Amy wants alpacas, but... Someone told me that they're, like, they're kind of crazy. Yeah, I guess alpacas, when they get real comfortable with you, they'll just start, like, fucking with you. Because, like, goats are chill. Like, goats are chill. But Amy doesn't like goat cheese. I like goat cheese. Uh, we're going to get a bunch of chickens. Are you going to, like, be down to go milk goats every morning, though? Am I down to milk goats every morning? Like, I kind of well, I don't know. I feel, it'll probably feel like I'm whacking a dude off, which is kind of weird. Like, You're going to be like my life. farm boy. You're going to need to do your live stream while milking goats. Well, I and think the wa- live stream, hang on, there's a super get, chat. Don't get engorged. Stay away from the Flow Hive brand if you want to get wax. See, this is what I'm talking about. We got experts in everything in the bear community. Flow I think the bear feed will eventually include our, our, like, our daily compound activities of, uh, of, uh, making our own food because you know when the dollar does eventually collapse which it will because of bernie sanders esque spending you want to be able to have yourself as eric said a handgun a shotgun and a rifle you're going to want chickens a source of fresh rain and a strong community amish bears cheers to amish bears Owen is now growing a beard and shave off his mustache. I should. I'm not going to go full prepper. I'm going to go, like, it's not going to be like I have some bunker full of shit. But I'm going to be thinking, like, what happens when shit goes down? Because it's not going to be, a po- it's not the apocalypse I'm scared of. It's not like there's no government, there's no roads, there's no anything. It, it just easily could be five weeks, a month. Like what happened in Katrina or what happened in Houston or what happened to those places is inevitable everywhere. So why not prepare for that? And then also when we do have an economic downturn, which is coming, not if, but when, why not be able to like live on a fucking five bucks a day or whatever, you know, you know what we got here? What made Amy choose civil? Oh, here we go. A couple, couple of questions for Amy Bear and then, uh, then we're out. What made Amy choose civil as her engineering discipline? I chose mechanical, but now I'm considering switching to petroleum. Dude, do petroleum. Petroleum engineers make a fuckload of cash, and it's a real stable job. But anyway, Amy, what made you choose that? Um, originally, I got into civil structural engineering because I have a real fear of earthquakes uh, growing up in the Northwest, and I transferred that fear into learning how you can make a building not collapse, and then it, it made me not so scared anymore. So that was originally what got me into civil, but then I started to really appreciate understanding how everything around us works, and that was it. What a great answer from a great lady. This is from Simon. Hey, Owen, just registered at the, on the Bear app as v- VHS Bear. Would love a confirmation from you, though. Wanted to be Baroque Bear, but it was taken. All the best to you and your family. Keep fighting the good fight. Welcome, VHS Bear. What a great name. That's a very original name. I kind of miss VHS because it made you almost work for it and earn it. You know, he couldn't just skip around. He had to watch the movie. I went into mechanical drafting and ended up in civil. Oh, by the way, engineering is still worth an education. I agree. Like when I say, when I say don't go to college, I mean, don't get a stupid degree like me in history or English or fucking gender studies or why races are all different or whatever the hell people are talking about. Like if you want to get into engineering or something specific, by all means, that's a good move. But I just think college is becoming absurd and it's a breeding ground for socialists. 
Joe Knoxbury, my daughter was born at 24 weeks. She was one pound, two ounces. She's 21 years old now. That's awesome. I got a lot of messages like that from my brother and a bunch of people of all the people that were born super early that uh, uh, are fine now. So that's huge. Or a degree in David Beckham. It's actually a thing from DeLev. Yeah, I know. People are fucking stupid. That's the bottom line is people are going into debt to become nonsense people. Uh, hello to you and Amy and the unborn. Also, I was raped by a Kami Cosby. <laughs> also, you missed my supas, but they were cheap, so it's all good. Oh, sorry. Things are really flying around here. We got 900 bears just, just roaming right now, just grabbing honey and salmon, just crushing. All right, I got to hit the road. So hugepianist.com slash specials if you want to check out Eric, Eric's last one or my last two. But I'll release Nimmer's special too. I'll just call it, hey, look, more black person or something. Hey, look, a, a, bla a black guy gets more these days. Just more shit. Um, but he's honestly like crazy, crazy, crazy talented. And, and it's so funny how many people get to see that after shows and stuff. They're like, man, Nimmer's one of my favorite fucking comics now. I, there's a reason. And it's like in this environment, people get so jaded and shitty because of the leftists where it's like, because people like literally in Portland, you go into a bar on reparations night and you're black, you get fucking free drinks. I'm like, this is real. So the irony of course is sometimes when black people get achievements or they get, um, uh, uh, some people assume it's because they're black, which is fucking infuriating to me. And I'm not even black. If I was black, I would be so fucking pissed about all that shit. I'd be like, I earned it. If, if Nimmer was white, I would have hooked him up even faster. <laughs> the black thing was like a, a, a curveball for me. Like I was like, man, why couldn't he have been white? He's so damn talented. And then I'm like, but you know, I gotta look past the skin. Like I'm an old school racist, like a real one. Like one that isn't, I don't enjoy helping someone who isn't part of my genetic tribe. Uh, and by that, I also mean tall, uh, not just white, tall white, short white. I mean, when the lights go out, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do to help? I really hope like all the nursing staff just heard that little bit through our door. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Danny Bear, Q for Amy. How do you find a good guy in a soy state, New Jersey? What is the ideal age to start dating for real? Marriage, hugs, um, Amy? I think for women, I'm assuming that's from a woman, date, date an older guy. You're always gonna just match maturity levels a little bit more. I'd say like I'm probably slightly more mature than Owen and he's like seven years old. I'm just kidding, but date an older guy, that'll really help. She is, I think my penis is funny. <laughs> uh, but just, just date older. Don't go for a guy your age. You'll just end up really um, kind of angry a lot. <laughs> yeah, date older. But what about in a soy state? It's same thing. I think it just takes time. Like, all guys, I think, will get there. I think that it's like the 20-year-old, the for the most part, especially in soy states, is, is a really tough one. And then uh, what age should she start dating? Um, well... I oh, Deleb says not too old, though. High school. High school start dating. High school. Yeah, it's like don't get like too serious. You change a lot from high school to, you know, when you're 21 in college. So don't uh, just you know take time to find the person that that matches you and allows you and that you can grow with because you will grow. You want to grow together. You don't want to grow apart. You want to grow together, not apart. I, I zoned. I, I've just I've gotten used to zoning out when she talks. Yeah, he's a he's a real piece of shit. <laughs> Best wishes to you all. Remember, baby bears can't have honey until one year old. It can cause botulism. Oh, and don't forget to tell Amy as you wish. Aww. Oh, that's a Princess Bride reference. Yeah. Uh, don't date in high school, says Water Bear. Well, so we all know now that Water Bear must have been raped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no such thing as a soy bear. That's true. Uh, as you wish. That's cute. Well, Nimmer, you said something really funny to Nimmer because like he was laughing because oh, 
because uh, me and her really are kind of like, I'm kind of, you know, we're, we're affectionate. Like, and uh, what did you tell the story, Aim? Yeah, we were just like referring to each other's love as we were setting up all the stuff for the show, but it was, this, uh, and Eric just kind of like called us out for being like dorks of like, just, you know, being like, oh, hey, love, like, hi, love, Debbie. And I was like, we took a really long time to get like this lame or something. I was gay. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like, you guys are gay. And Amy goes, it took a really long time for us to get this gay. Like, let us have this. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It was like, uh, yeah, I told you to stop being gay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, and my wife is, uh, what is it? Oh, my wife is 16 and a half years younger and she is more mature for sure. Oh yeah. And it's just like, cause then men can provide cause providing is important, especially when, uh, when you have kids and it's, uh, and you just can provide more when you're older. Like if I was, if I was 28 or how old are you? 30? I, yeah, I just turned 30. If I was 30. Guys just don't have that. Life I wouldn't life. be able to, she wouldn't be able to be stay at home. Guys don't have the bio biological time clock women have to start a family. So when you, when a woman starts like feeling that maternal instinct, you know, mid twenties, maybe late twenties, maybe earlier, it's just so much easier to find, like match that with a guy a little older when they start. I think guys, guys start feeling that, I think, uh, especially like maybe mid thirties if they're going to feel it. Yeah. So it's just, you just want to like keep that in mind. Someone said, you can be gay, but just not gay, gay, just gay. Yeah, you don't double gay. Just one gay. Doesn't two negatives make a positive? Two negatives. Oh, yeah, the triple gay is the real scary one. <laughs> like gay, gay, gay. Because the two, it's the negative, negative plus positive. I got to meet Amy in Portland. She's so lovely. The show is amazing. You were so relaxed in, in, in your element. Big Bear, thanks for what you do. Well, yeah, that's the thing that, that is so funny is I'm just a good comic. And I had to face the soy because I, I wasn't going to uh, kneel. And that's real. You know, I was just texting with uh, a very successful comedian that will remain nameless because I don't want to, you know, uh, let him, let his name be touched by my ostracism. But I was like, dude, I'm doing fine in exile. And he was like, man, I love your posts. He's like, I love when you rip up Bernie. He's like that motherfucker. And, uh, and I'm like, and it's so funny that some of these dudes are like, you, you're not even controversial. Like you just talk about how men and women are different. I'm like, but according to the left, men and women aren't different. And then if you don't agree with nonsense, you get put into exile. But that's why the success that we're having is important to show. And so listen, I may sell this. This is going to be the one special I may also put on YouTube. I'll tell you why. Oh, uh, someone just said, I am stuck on someone who has all the attributes of an amazing husband, but doesn't want to have a girlfriend because he is afraid he will wake up and regret not going out and experiencing life. What do I do? Amy? I wasn't listening. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Uh, just... I can tell you. No, I got it again. Just this time, you know. I'm focused. I'm stuck on someone who has all the attributes of an amazing husband, but doesn't want to have a girlfriend because he is afraid he will wake up and regret not going out and experiencing life. What well, to do? You can't change his mind because he needs to do that. You don't want to, you don't want to, who needs to go out and do that? They need to experience that. And if it's meant to be, then you guys will be around for each other when you're both then experiencing He doesn't want to be with you. Okay. If you leave, this is the win. I, I don't even know how to describe it. Just a, a, a trail of defeat. Uh, and just thirsty, sweaty, dumb, lonely, just, uh, reaches, just, just reaches out into the abyss of humanity, just the, of the, of lack of humanity. If he, uh, realizes that's all it is, he'll come back. And if not, he won't. And you, and you dodge the bullet anyway. It's a win-win. The thing that, um, sounds like he had money. Yeah. It sounds like he has cash. That's obvious because if it was just, a if it was just a dude, I think there's a good chance she would just bail, but she's probably like, well, you know, I really, I'm really into the money. <laughs> I'm really into all that money, but he knows about how many women he can get with all that money. And he doesn't have the moral compass to realize that the strong man starts an empire and the weak man uh, breeds like rabbits trying to just throw jizz in the wind like a fucking dandelion. Uh, she said he doesn't have cash. 
Oh, then what the hell is she even thinking? All right, we're hitting the road. Nimmer, I'm coming to get you right now. So be ready in, uh, in 12. Wow. You won't have that money chasing all of them women. It's true. It's true. There's a reason that uh, a lot of very successful men are family men because you lose a lot of time, money, soul, just everything if you're just chasing, if you're just running around grabbing ass. Aim, how much more successful have I become from uh, ever since becoming uh, monogamous with you? much more successful you said we're towards towards like a goal as opposed to just recovering from the night before yeah see and it really is about committing to one person because you, you can't just do it with like oh i'm not going to go out i'm not going to drink i'm not once you get to the mindset where like other women or other men whatever you are isn't a goal other things just start falling in place. It's really crazy. It's like, you just don't like, once that's out of your mind, people trust you more. They naturally will trust you more because you can't really manipulate people that as well as you think over time, like long-term friendships, long-term uh, business associates. People know the guy that has an intention of putting their cock somewhere that it doesn't belong. And I think that's one reason why we have such a successful cult is because your cult leader, doesn't want to fuck you because most downfalls of cults have to do with the cult leader wanting to fuck people. And the fact that I don't is why our cult is so successful. Uh, Brian visited the West coast for the first time last week. Holy hell. It's not exaggerated. More Bernie Priuses and blue haired lesbians than you can count. Oh, I know it's infinite. It's infinite. The reason our cult is, is, is successful because the downfall of every cult, everyone knows is their leader is trying to put their cock places. <laughs> Amy, do you it's find the, it's the only downfall of every cult? It's mostly not a cult. Well, my new thing is calling it uh, a militia or like, cause I felt like such a warlord on that truck. Amy. It was amazing. That truck was huge. It was like double the size I thought it was. Gonna well, it was a military be. truck. Yeah, I, I'm not used to it. From Danny Bear, Amy is very pretty. Dad left his credit card on the kitchen table. Good luck with the baby, Danny. Uh, dad left his... Dad? I don't know what that means. Um, oh, the sun's very bright. We're so not a cult that I like calling us a cult. Leftism's a real cult. This is a consensual group of individuals with like-minded values. That's literally what humanity is supposed to be. And cults about force and manipulation. What does that sound more like? I don't know. Bernie fucking Sanders. It's, I'm such an embarrassment to Amy sometimes to, uh, because like if she's on the phone to somebody, uh, like, um, medical professional or something. I don't change, which is a good and a bad thing. Like if we're having an argument, I don't like put on a happy face, you know, like we could be in a fucking Ferris wheel with like, with like all of our extended family. Ferris wheel? We're just, we're spitting on a Ferris wheel. It's not like I'm a, like this screamer or anything. It's not like I'm a dick. But if we're like having an argument. You have zero embarrassment in life. Like, well, I'm not, I'm not lying. It's like some people, I don't want to know who I don't trust. No, you, you don't have any embarrassment. You, you, no, you have no embarrassment. Like you don't get embarrassed ever. And that's all it is. It's not that it, like you're not lying. You could still lie. And still well, lie. yeah, no, I know. Like you can lie, but, but all I'm saying is I don't trust the people that'll be like a dick. And then, like, if someone comes around, they're like, shh, shh, just be quiet for now. And then they're like, oh, hey. It's like, oh, so you could have just been nice. That's the thing is, like, I don't like people that it's like, oh, they're being a dick, but they could shut it off. Are you right now being passive aggressive? Because you're kind of describing me. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm not. I honestly wasn't trying okay, to describe you. I swear to God I wasn't. 
So I can super chat and shop all day now with his credit card. You have such a great family. Oh, that's hilarious. Our dad left the credit card. Our dad left the credit card. I know. Oh, don't over, don't overdo it. Your dad sounds like a, a good man. All right, I gotta go. Oh, those people are called psychopaths. Yeah, but there's a ton of them. And there's a lot more, uh, and, it, and, it, and like when I think of uh, psychopath, I usually think of male. There's a lot of, this is not passive aggressive because you're really not like this. Like, honestly, I wouldn't even categorize you as like this. You don't really get that mad. No, but like, I, you're can, not... I can, like, put on a happy face. Like, like if someone... I would rather not involve strangers in our conflict. <laughs> yeah, I, I just have no shut-off. Like, she could be like... I could be like, Amy, do you not respect the fact that I sometimes need to sleep? Or, so, I don't know, just some dumb thing. Or it's like, I, I'm telling you, I appreciate the socks. And if she's like... But, like, there's someone really important here. And I'm like, well, then they get to fucking hear about my need for socks. <laughs> and I don't see that as a bad thing. I think that it's weird when people uh, can just change their emotions so fast. It means that they were never real to begin with. And we don't even fight that much, like, at all. Uh, I feel like that guy's girl thing in general... I do the same stuff, Owen. I have a feeling we're related. I swear to God. All right, I got to go get Nimmer. Nimmer, be ready. I'm, I, so uh, when the special comes out, it, I'm going to just tell you guys straight up. I'll, I'll sell it for like a month, and then I'm going to put it on YouTube because I want the glory of, of the ability of doing your own show to be seen because I, I, I really, really want... Um, <laughs> what's that? I'm just explaining that you can be sarcastic. Oh, yeah, I was being sarcastic you a lot of times. Oh, it's all good. You know Dwight's site? I don't. <laughs> so I really want people to see that you can make uh, make make shows anywhere because I want other comics to be less uh, less worried about the uh, the exile. And so I'm gonna sell it for like a month, and then I'm gonna put it on YouTube because I haven't put my other two specials on YouTube simply because I, I want. If people buy it, I want you to have that value, and I don't want to undercut you down the line. Kind of like what uh, what people have done with the price of education. But this one, in maybe a month or two, I will end up putting online. So if you buy it, it's because you want to get it early, and you want to, you know, get um, just just keep the comedy machine moving. All right, I gotta go. Bye. Oh, and I'll see you tonight in Bellevue, everybody, and. Uh, if you want to support the show, hugepianist.com. I play piano. I play piano. That's why it's huge pianist. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to explain that sometimes because it sounds really random. And, and if I don't pronounce it properly, it sounds really aggressive. How do I join the Bears from Atlanta? And I don't have Facebook because I couldn't take it anymore. Unbearablesapp.com. And also uh, hugepianist.com slash subscribe or patreon.com slash WDTL. Uh, much love. Stay hydrated. Amy's good. Baby's good. You guys all kicked ass. And uh, Portland, much love. Eastern Washington, much love. And uh, Bellevue tonight. And uh, much love to Nimmer and uh, and Artling. Support Artling. That dude's a, a champion. And DeLev, Base Tax. And go, uh, subscribe to Owen Benjamin Clips channel. This one, hit the alarm. Uh, and all that stuff. And uh, much love to all of you because love is, is better than uh, than dehydration. <laughs>